Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have got a quite heavily modified C63 in and we are doing something that you probably don't expect. We are putting it back to standard, taking all the modified stuff off it, putting it back to factory because the customer's selling it, which personally I think is a good idea. One of the main things it's got is a straight for exhaust, which is extremely loud. Let's see if you can hear this. Personally, it's uh, a bit loud for me. I, I don't know how anyone can daily drive that, to be honest, but there you go. Uh, we've also got a modified steering wheel. That needs to go. We've got coilovers all around and some bits and pieces. So we'll take you around the car and see how we get on. So here's the car. As you can see, we've got Carbon intake pipes uh, and scuttle. We've got to get all that off. As you can see, the car's been lowered. We've got to get all that off. The exhaust, I will show you on the ramp. Here's all the bits. Uh, there's some more bits somewhere. Steering wheel. steering wheel on. These exhausts have actually got second cap delete anyway, so. Okay, so we are underneath the car, I'm just having a look at everything. Um, those headers don't look nice to get in or out. Just checking that nothing's been welded, so we can refit to the original exhaust, which is there, which we can. From there backwards, it's standard. So I've just laid it out, checked everything. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't know if you can see, you can see some of the nuts right up there. I'm gonna lube them up, we'll leave that till last. Uh, we don't wanna risk snapping one of them. Not really looking forward to that, to be honest. You can just about see that copper nut on the left hand side. In the meantime, we'll take an assessment of the suspension, make sure all that can go back on. Right, we've got all the bits out we need. Unfortunately, the old top mounts are on the coilovers, so we're going to have to take the coilovers off, compress them and get the top mounts to swap them back. So a bit more work than I originally thought. We've lubed up all the manifold nuts. Hopefully make it easy for us. All right, so we've got the wheel off and we can now get to the bolts at the back. So we've got one, Two. We've got this one here. We've got to. This is a shorter anti roll bar link. You can leave that attached at the top, but we'll disconnect it at the bottom to put the full length link on. And then we can get the coil out and swap the top mount over. So we've got all the bolts out underneath for the hub. We're gonna to have to take this off to gain access to these bolts and then that will come out. It's a 14 mil. Who uses 14 mils? One 
strut. As you can see, comparison now, we need to get that off there and fit it onto there so we can make that strut back up. Right, so we need to get this top mount off. So there's a little locking screw there. So I've undone that. I've just got to clean these threads off. We can then wind this down to take the pressure off the mount and then we can compress our new spring and get it on. So that's loose now, so I can get that off. So now I need to transfer that onto the original one. We're going to have to use a special compressor for that. So as you can see, I'm all set up on the genuine Mercedes spring compressor. So now we've got to compress that down. So that's coming through here and then we can put our top mount back on. So as you can see, that's how much we've got to compress it to get it on the strut. So we've got first strut done uh, so it's a bit of a fight get that back together reverse order and then move on to the other side that's it put my bolts in loose so it gives me a bit of a bit of wiggle room That's it. Right, we are just about to refit the anti-roll bar links and it just occurred to me that these are handed. So you can fit these on the wrong side. So just got my diagram. 204-3217 is left. So that's left. Doesn't say left or right on them, so you gotta be careful. So, just double check that that is 1889, which is right. So, don't just take your links off and throw them back on because they're handed. Obviously, I've still got the shorter one on that side, so that's going to restrict me getting that in there. But I'm just checking it's not an up and a down as well. It looks the same, really, doesn't it? So, yeah, left and right anti roll bar links, be careful. Okay, so original struts are in both sides, old ones are out, strut brace is off. Passenger side's done. All the cables back in where they should go. Now I'm gonna move on to the rear. Got two shocks, two springs. So you can see, this is what we're taking out next. We're gonna take the spring out, take the shocker out. That bolts in through the inside of the car. So we need to get this cover off. Need to undo this bolt, lower this arm down, and then we can uh, remove the spring and get to the bottom bolt shot. Right, a 
old bolts are out. Now I'm just gonna let it down slowly. It's the lowered spring, so there shouldn't be much resistance in it, which there isn't. I put a punch in the back when I took the bolt out to keep it safe. So now it should come down slowly. Okay. Whoa. That was gonna get a spring in the face then. Huh? Spring out, bottom shock is undone. Just need to get to the uh, bolt under the bonnet. Uh, in the boot, in the boot. Right, so follow the strut to the top. So we're looking around here. Took the carpet down, a couple of trims, clips, and then they are the two nuts. Oop that we need to undo and then uh, that shocker will come out. <laughs> Joking, just drop the nut. So you can see it goes above that carpet, so we're going to have to take out a load of 10 mils to um, just give us a bit more access so we can take that out from, from behind. Shock her out. Just trying to film this with one hand. Difficult. So now we've got to swap the little top mount over from that to that, and then we can uh, put it all back together. Okay, so swapped it over, ready to refit. Okay, standard shockers back in, all bolted up up top, uh, springs back in, just need to put the cover on. Now I need to repeat the same on this side, get all this out, replace it with the normal stuff. All right, the factory suspension's back in, both sides. Covers are back on. Uh, it's been difficult filming this today with one hand and no help. We've got the original exhaust to put on both sides with a secondary decat. We have now got to take off the downpipes and these little bits and pieces of exhaust. Left the downpipes till last because I wanted to leave the bolts soaking in penetrating fluid. Need to get the Ram the sensors out, put the standard manifolds on, see all the stuff back in the packaging and we will also need to flash it with genuine Mercedes software to get rid of the remap which will compensate for all these lambda sensors and having no cats and stuff like that. Moving on to the exhaust manifold studs, you can see I've started undoing that one. You can see the one next to it, got to work our way down. I am going to disconnect the battery because I'm a bit close to that terminal for my liking. So I'm going to disconnect the battery and then it's going to be a bit of a fiddly job this. Right, we are doing the, getting the headers off. Save the best job till last, as in because it is a nightmare. Uh, I wouldn't normally do this job. I always decline them because anyone who's done one of these, fair play to you, you will know that it is hard work and the risk of a manifold stud snapping off is quite high. The reason I'm doing this one is because um, one is a mate and two 
these manifolds have only been on a couple of years, so it reduces the risk of something going wrong. Um, so officially, this is my first time ever doing headers. Unless the engine's out, this is hard work. You, I, I can't even show you what I'm doing because you can't see a thing. Um, I'll try and show you from up top some of them. Um, it's uh, it'll be easier to put the standard ones back on than getting these off. People that do actually fit these for a living and tune them up and all that. Fair play to you. See what I'm working with down here. I'll try and see if I can show you a nut. Can you see that nut in the mirror? Just about. So that's what I'm working with. So you're basically doing this job blind. Um, it's a nightmare. 11 mils, all the different tools of choice. Uh, footage I've been very good on this video because I've been trying to do it on my own and it's not really worked out at all but I started it so I've got to finish it but I'm getting a bit of help now it's literally I can't afford doing this because I can't see anything <laughs> no room for anything seven to go M156 header face pulling compilation when trying to undo nuts. This is why you don't fit these. It hit the floor. <laughs> right, I'll get a mirror now and see where my next nut is because you can't see it. I feel a set of nuts I've had in my life. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Right, we've cleaned the surface area of the original manifolds. See the difference to what we're changing here. So I'm hoping we've got a lot more room refitting these. Uh, we've got new gaskets to go on with it. So hopefully this is goes back on easier than it was taking them off. Much of it. Right, we've done the the harder side we're going to do the easier side which isn't easy um you can probably have a look let me get the touch have a look up here so you can see we've got a slot like in there that's it so it's going to be a bit of a not a good video this because you can't see much uh but we've committed now, so that's a header, that's a standard manifold. Don't ask me to ever fit any, because I won't. <laughs> and that's it, really. Once that's done, we'll get all the original exhaust back on, and then uh, we can start building it up. We've still got a few other jobs left to do, so hopefully we can get some good footage out of that. Uh, but so far, it's been pretty difficult. Right, original manifolds back in. We can finally 
move on to fit in the rest of the exhaust. That has been torture, basically. Right, first um, side exhaust on. We've got no, none of the original bolts of it, so we're having to make little kits of our own, basically. So, got that pinched in there. Good job we keep a large assortment of nuts and bolts. You always end up with stuff missing on big jobs like this and the customer says they'll give you the stuff and there's always bits and bobs missing but nobody's to know really because it is what it is. The customer doesn't know what's in there. Uh, but yeah, no big deal. Yeah, obviously they're not the originals, but it's uh, more than capable of doing the job. Let's get this side done, the other side done, then we can get the rest of the exhaust on, but it is nearly going home time. Okay, so all the exhaust is back on. I've removed and fitted an exhaust on these in a previous video, so I didn't bother again. Um, all the lambda sensors are plugged in underneath. New bolts. We had to replace one of the exhaust clamps because it was too far gone. We've got a steering wheel left to fit and put all the uh, underbonnet stuff back to the factory. We've already took off all the carbon stuff to gain access to the manifolds. As always, Reese is going to clean the hubs before we refit the wheel. Make sure we've got a nice clean surface. All, right, all the original engine parts are back on, all the carbon stuff off. As you can see from the previous video, we're going to lower it down now, see its new stance. I've got a cold today, by the way, that's why it's probably sound a bit different. Obviously, it's got to settle a bit more and we've got to track it. Uh, still got more bits to do. Right, on, finally on to the steering wheel. Um, should be pretty straightforward. There's a little tab in here that you press to pop the steering wheel out. If you can feel it. There we go. We've already done the other side. I've got a cold today. I feel rubbish. Um, so you have to bear with me. The battery's already disconnected. Um, just got to undo this, hopefully take it out as one unit. Yep, rather take that rather than both of them. One airbag. There we go. See those marks there? Yep, which line up with that bottom spline and the top spline so I know to put it on exactly like that. Unfortunately, the steering wheel's not straight, just the way I've took it off. But we've got, uh, we can go off that there. So them two black lines line up with that bottom spline. Never even took any of this stuff out before. Flush at the back. Yes, this first wasn't it. It's on there.
Right, all done. Just going to check every single screw again. Let's get the steering wheel back on. We're going to go off the original lines and show him we've not moved anything. Two black lines we're talking about. Slot it on. Plug that in. We need to clean that Loctite off. We're going to clean that off and apply new. And then we're going to torque that bolt back in. Nice, generous bit of Loctite. Last thing we want is that not coming undone. Torque wrench all set up. Torque settings 80. I always feel like that's a little bit not that high. <laughs> ah. Last plug to go in. And then that simply clips in. They're the tabs that we were pushing there to release. So back in. Come on. There we go. Have a feel of your horn. Everything's smooth. That's it. Done. There we go. Just make sure the buttons work. No, it doesn't. Oh yeah, thought the buttons didn't work for a second then. Uh, yeah, all the buttons are working. Up, down, left, right. Just check volume on this side. Right, we're all logged in on the diagnostic machine. We have got a software update which um, should detect it's not got factory software on it. Battery support units all hooked up so we can get that installed and then we should be back to factory. Software updates underway. Engine fan is going crazy. Headlights are on. And that's why it's really important to put your battery support unit on. Look at that, taking 90 amps to keep that going. Okay, programming's done. We are now moving on to coding. And then we are all back to factory. Last job to do is tracking. Obviously, I need to road test it. It's sitting a bit high, but it'll settle down after a road test, and then we can get it on the tracking machine. Right, we've done a short road test. We've got all the gauges on, and we've measured it all up, and the rear is out just on one side, so we'll adjust that in, and then we'll move on to the front. Right, we've cracked off the nut for the camber adjustment. So I've got a special tool in here. If you come around here, you can see that that goes around and up the back to get to the adjusted nut. And as I move that, that pivots this arm, which adjusts the tracking on the screen. All right, as you can see, we're now even on both sides, camber, that's how the camber is on this car. It's actually not adjustable anyway. So now we'll move on to the front. Get the steering wheel in straight head position. So we'll put the steering wheel straight and then we'll take our readings. So now we're going to lock the steering wheel in the straight head position. And we can see now we have got and there's our current readings. So they're both over to one side. So we need to bring them over to get the total toe in the middle. Again, camber, that's how it is. And then we can get him driving straight down the road. So we've got the tie rod and the chat would end. So as we, I've already loosened that off. As we turn that, that's gonna move our measurement on the screen. So that one is about there. And then we need to move on to that one and then uh, we'll get it all straight. We've now got our toes all in the green, total toe. Got our straight ahead position pretty much bang on. So that's the tracking all done. Finally the car's finished. 
and it can go back to the customer. Okay, so that, that's uh, this video all done, finished. Um, everything back together. I um, hope you enjoyed that. Something a little bit different. It's not often you demodify a car. Give us a like and a subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, sorry about all the sniffling. I've got a cold. And uh, on to the next video. Cheers.